Now numpy is a package which stands for numerical python. Before this numpy we uh, did something called as simpy which was a symbolic computation package. Okay. It is expressing things in a symbolic way. That's all right. Now uh, we are going to deal up with the numpy which is a package which stands for numerical python. Uh, it's like mostly used by the scientists and most of the developers of the programmers in the mathematics field or in scientific computations. Okay, so these are much used in the computational skills, scientific computations on arrays and all. Okay, and it was created by uh, Oliphant in uh, 2005, something around. Okay, the purpose was to provide the output with 50 times or mostly like uh, not 50 times you can say a good speed with a good pace than the list how list executes okay uh, getting some of the things um, all right so that was the purpose of doing all this thing all right so uh, let's write that definition of this one right if you just write what is Let's see, then there is a package. It stands for numerical Python and scientific computations. All right. Now, what are the functions and what are the modules? Sorry, what are the uh, the methods and how numpy are faster than the list will go on? We'll see after this. Okay. Now, uh, so the very first is to import the numpy. As whatever you need. Okay. The very first thing. Now, after importing, it is checked which version we are using. Probably 1.8.1 we are going to use. Okay. Right. So this is the package version what you are looking at here 1.8.1. Now, what are the functions and what are the things inside the total module? What you see here is all the functions of NumPy. All these. Okay, we are not going to learn every of the things, right? So, uh, most probably we will be covering uh, almost uh, 20 to 40 functions there. Right? We will try to cover. From here, we will be like going up with the zeros where we stack, we split, and uh, version we have done just now, right? Getting up the versions in that case is, and just a moment. Yeah, then we have. What we are going to do, I am just telling you, okay. Uni 8, these are the unicodes, just okay. Then, where are the tans and all? Transpose, T, tan, sys, swap axis, stack, subtract, sum, string, and a lot of functions are there as you can see from the starting. Okay? So, these are the functions. Right, which comes inside the directory of numpy. Okay. All right, moving ahead. So let's go and first of all see that how 
this num3 is faster than list. How we say num3 is faster than list? So num3 is faster than list in two of the terms. The first term is that we can say that num3 arrays occupies a very less space for the same contents what a list does. If list is occupying 28,000 space, then num3 would be occupying around 7,000 something. Seven times smaller of that or uh, might be 4,000, 5,000, something like that. Okay, we'll see today. Okay. Next. So you might be aware of the system module, right? SYS, that is also important in this case. It just print all the directories up there. If all these things you get in the just okay uh, do you guys remember what was the function to get all the modules what a python is having anyone just quickly answer anyone who remembers this method how to get all the modules of a python package of python the dir module DIR modules. DIR directly. Yeah. yeah. Directly of modules. Like this. Like this. Hmm. Yeah, bit close. You should write help. If you can find, yeah, that's it. Help of the modules, okay. For getting the documentation of that, you will get here all the things. Whatever the modules are available on your system, you will get those things. It's going still. Wait for a minute. I think it is done now. So we see from the crypto brain as art QTP. EY and a lot of things, right? We'll be learning Seaborn. We'll all you'll see calendars which comes basically. Some of them are very popular, some of them MKL50 you learn in machine learning in SciPy. SciPy it is in SciPy. Strings and a lot of functions are there, right? So you can write any module name. Today we are learning NumPy, so that is on the end. You can find it there in the end numpy okay you have completed this simpy now we are learning this numpy after this we are going to do the panda so we have all right it's coming do you know what is p by t z anyone <coughs> used for time zones for setting time right time yeah Used for time zones. Nice. So the very first thing is in the numpy we deal with the arrays now okay arrays you might be understanding what are arrays right so not going on that details now arrays in numpy have a lot of dimensions can be one dimension two dimension three dimension n dimensions that why we call it as is n dimensional arrays 
because we can have n number of dimensions in the array right so we call it as n dimensional arrays now how to make a numpy array numpy array okay the very first thing is you can simply as i have written numpy as np okay so i can just write np dot array and the parenthesis from this this is a way of writing any array or just remove the parenthesis and run this so this is the function of numpy array okay now so how to make an array it's like working it works like a list right now uh, many a times you would have a confusion in the starting i should wear it many a times you would uh, see on the internet that an array is written also like this if i'm making an array of 1 2 and 3 for something okay we are going to use it like this there are much more changes between all these things right it's better if you use something like list habit if you have a habit of writing list and all that would be better in case of tuples otherwise you understand what n tuples you have we'll see if there what why different sometimes it makes a difference while writing in this methods okay right so this is a method of writing a numpy array right so 1 2 3 4 now i say that has a 1 array 1 okay so 1 2 3 4 i'm not going to now deal up with the dimensions let's let's first understand how an array works okay so this is an array now see printing are the two different things you what you get like when you print other things if you simply print a 1 you get array of 1 2 3 and 4 when you write print a1 in that case you only get the print of that array you don't get that that's right because in that when you write a1 in the tenth number of cell what you are looking on there you get an out ten which says that this is the output when you run this one but if you are printing something then you generally know that you are going to get the output right so in that case no out is coming there right so only you get the values It's not right. I think of that. This is an array or something. So a one is an array, and you get the one, two, three, four out. Still jumping. Now, the next thing. Okay, this was like kind of how you can make an array. Now arrays can be of various kinds. Like if I say n p dot an array. Now you have seen one bracket. There can be two bracket. There can be three brackets, right? Now let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Let's see the A two. I'm just printing this right now. A two. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, and some other way. right this is a different method now let's understand what are these things actually why three brackets why so many brackets in the next line right now there is something called as dimensions dimensions you can understand as x dimension y dimension x y z three dimensions So three, four, five. Like if you can, if you take a paper out there, you can have two dimensions, right? Multiple papers will be added and make as three dimension. Then more multiple shelf uh, shelves can be added to make the four dimensions, and it can be added and like it. It can be a room of like n number of dimensions over there, right? So n number of dimensions. Then how to identify that n? If we are having n number of dimensions, that means some number of dimensions right n can be 1 2 3 4 5 6 anything how to identify that so for that we have a function called as ndim okay that will go on later onwards now without ndim if you want to understand that how many number of dimensions you are having the easiest way is to look on the number of list brackets 
starting list brackets and ending list brackets. That's it. That makes a sense like if I say in this array, how many list brackets are there? Mm -hmm. Anyone quickly? It's easy, right? It's a four. Four, how? Sorry. Four left side, four right side. And in middle, no. that's three. Uh -huh. I am asking in this A1, A1. Okay, okay, A1. A1 only two. Uh, see, one pair of list bracket is there, right? So, if you don't count it like one and two, okay. So, one pair of them, you, you can only count like the starting number of list bracket. So, in the starting, I can only see one list bracket. Right? One list bracket. In the second one, I can see one, two, three list brackets. Isn't it? Don't go for the middle ones and all understand. Okay. Only go for the starting ones. So in the starting one and then in the second one we got three. So from this concept you can identify it like the first one is a one dimension array, the second one is a three dimension array. Got it. Or else you have a function called as endim. Numpy dot endim to identify the number of dimensions in any array. Right now, let's see one dimension array, two dimension array, three dimension array, zero dimension array. Right, many a times we look on zero dimension array, but zero will go on the last. You can easily have the concept then, right? Okay, now let's say that if I say that a1 is a one dimension array, how can I be sure that a1 is a one dimension array? For now, if I print a1, I get something like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, right, list brackets only, 1. Now, print a1 dot number of dimensions, that's it, right. What is the value we are going to get is 1, that is 1 dimension. Same I am going to do with the second one, so I am going to write a2, okay. And then number of dimensions will be a2 dot ending. So a2 is having all these things and 3 is the number of dimensions of this a2. Easy. So if I write an array where I say uh, not like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, anyone can tell me how many dimensions it is having? Sure. It is 2. Okay. Then run this. We get 2 dimensions, right? Because 2 list brackets starting, 2 list bracket ending, right? It's very easy to look on from that sense also, right? Now, how can be a zero dimension array form, right? So till now we have been looking on that for one dimension, two dimension, three dimensions, what we see, number of list brackets define the number of dimensions. Now, what if we don't have any list brackets? No dimensions, right? A4. Hundred without any list brackets. Just writing something. That's it. A four is an array. That is a numpy array, right? That is not thousand, right? That is hundred, which is a four value, and then the zero is the number of dimensions that is zero dimension figure zero dimension array clear having doubts
No one having doubts, right? If they have, you can ask it. Okay, fine. Next is something called as uh, size, shape, right? What are the functions we are going to do today? Size, shape, item shape, and the uh, sys modules, get size of and all, okay? Then the dimensions we have done, right? So we'll, let's go and see one by one. Okay. Now for any array, like in the list guys, if you have a list of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. How do we count that there are 9 or 10 elements? Yeah. Size. Mm -hmm. Size. Size. We write size. Right? For a normal list, I'm saying. What do we say? Length, length, something. Length. Length of y, 10. Now, similar to this, if you are having an array and all the elements you want to count up, like how many elements we are having, we can use the function size. So, as to like uh, if you are having a3, okay, let's have a3. So, printing the a3 dot size. So, we say len of a3. Two. What is the length of A3? Two. What it means? In one particular list, you are having two sub list. This is one and this is two. That's it. But the elements, how many elements are there? Individually elements are eight. Four into two, eight. Clear. So in case of a numpy array, don't go with the length. When it is more than one dimension. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, next. Now, so size is clear, right? Now, every element, like if you remember, we have discussed what is the size of an integer. We might have discussed in very previous day, I think, the first day. What is the size of an integer? Okay, float, complex, anything which you remember? I guess the uh, int has a size of 2, float 3. What is my right? This dot get size. Get size. Of Twenty-six. What will be the size? Two. Yes, sir. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight bytes. Twenty-eight bytes. Yes, sir. Size of a float? Four. Four. You might have said to you. Complex also goes like that. 30. 32. 32. Something. Okay. So, like these are the sizes, right? So, uh, how do we define the individual size of any element in the NumPy? Now, the very important thing in NumPy is that in the list, what we have different kind of data elements, that is different kind of data types of the elements combining in one list and you can make a list of heterogeneous data types, basically. Right? But when it comes in the uh, numpy, numpy are a homogeneous arrays. A 
okay these are the homogeneous energy Total now let's say far right and array of one, two, three, four, five, and then a float. One float event. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, and then writing four point five. Now if I look on to the A4, what you are going to get is all the float values. Why? Because one was zip float, right? According to the precedence, you'll be having up the values there right okay fine then so one two three four five four point five if we have booleans everything will be in the boolean okay so there are ways how to convert one data types and all now to see up the data types right so what are the data types in the numpy np dot d types so having the data type so what is there shapes and all we are getting one second d type of a4 is Four dot D type will be better. Anyway, things. So it is a float sixty four. All right. Is there any other names? Names. Uh, item size. Okay. Data type of flags. Names. Name. Alright, fine, leave it. So, what do you see if I am writing a4 dot d type data type? I am getting float 64. That means float of 64 bytes, bits, bytes. Okay, right now, if it is float of 64, then with the data type, even you can understand that what will be the individual element size. What will be the individual element size? How we are going to define? So, in case you are getting float 64. That is 64 is to be divided by 8. Whatever the values we are going to get, that doesn't matter. If it is integer 16, integer 8, integer 32, integer 64, uh, anything complex 128, any of the values. Okay. What you have to do is you have to divide it by 8. Like if it is 64, 64 by 8, integer division. Okay. 8. If it is 128, divide by 8 16 right that defines of what 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 bytes your element size will be having item size item size it says specifically right so a4 dot item size will be what will be the item size of a4 then quick yes sir 8 right that is 8 8 because 64 will be divided by 8 as such like okay right. yes okay now so how can we identify for a list if we say for a list uh, what was that this name where is it y so what is the size of y One twenty. Uh, let's see if we get uh, including the index and all. Remove this, right? So if it is one hundred and fifty-two, 
right size of the y now what will be the size of the y when y is a numpy array so let's say n y numpy array of y okay so that is being done now to see the size of that what is important is what is important to see the size of that just to write and y dot size for now it is having 10 elements right that is the number of elements right so number of size defines the number of elements multiplied by the number of item size or any item size will be having the same right so that is because that is a homogeneous so all the, uh, the size remains same correct yes. so n y dot item size like if if one pen cost five then what is a pen, cost of 15 pen the five multiplied by 15 right so if item size is something whatever it will be of the y then multiplied by the total number of size will be given the size so let's see what size we get 80 all right 80 what is the previous size of the list 152 so you can see the difference the same number of elements but having a different size okay now more we can do is like uh, for i in range of 10,000 x dot f and i right so uh, let's do one thing let's make it from the beginning one like uh, for one is to be done let's say the start time so we have to import the time of So now I say the time dot time, basically now time, right? So time dot time, that current time is going to be done, okay? And after the uh, values being appended, I'll be writing stop time dot time, okay? After everything done, it is stop. Now we have to calculate just a moment. So we have to calculate the stop time minus the start time to get the result. Right? Execution time of the stop basically uh, like whenever the range completes the stop time what we get right minus of the start time. We'll be getting it like that, right? Executions converting into microseconds and all. If you want it, you can convert these things. Would be better. Okay, so let's run this. Let's see. Two point eight seconds. Microseconds, you can see. Okay, let's run the same thing in case of an numpy array. has no attribute of range yeah obviously oh sorry yeah, that's a range right so it's 2.92 wait so here basically the ranges are to be let's run this again 3.43 so it takes a lot of time right there is a difference between the speed of the numpy and the list. A lot of difference are there, right? Okay. Moving ahead. Now, what are range and all will be dealing up with the things, right? Okay. So, what are the functions you have written now? Nd, uh, nd min, the size function, the, uh, what is that? Item size. 
item size function what more anything more no okay now next now nd mean is something where you get the size uh, sorry where you get the dimensions of any array now what if you want to set your own dimensions like if you are writing one dimension array and you want it to be a 50 dimension array or a 20 dimension array then in that case how we are going to set those things right let's say a5 is going to be an array and i'm making it as a one dimension array for now let's say 1001000 something like this okay one so i have taken 30503188 okay total eight elements is there now if i print a5 dot nd min what is the number of dimensions i'm having was there ending it is one now for setting the minimum number of dimensions you require like if i require 20 dimensions that means 20 less brackets so for that what i'm doing is np dot an array of a5 where the number of minimum dimensions is to be 20. Oh, understood? An array of A5 where the minimum number of dimensions in place of ND and NDIM or you can say NDIM, right? In place of NDIM, we are using ND min, minimum. Run this. What do you see? 20 list brackets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. All right, clear outs. So, th this is a 20 dimensional array. Having doubts? I hope no doubts would be there, right? Okay, so that is. So that is a number of dimension setting, right? You can set your own number of dimensions you need, you require. Okay. So I think item size is clear, right? Next we have data type that I think we have done. For any of the elements, you can just go with the dot data, <coughs> sorry, dot data type to understand the data type, right? Now, when you have more than one dimension, guys, uh, how to understand that what is the number of rows and columns because there you go with the more than one dimensions two dimensions so how to understand now let's say about a4 what is that one two three okay a3 yeah that's fine so what is the shape of this a3 so that is a3 dot shape two by four that means if i zoom it there you can see two rows, one and two, two rows. And in each row, you have four elements, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Clear. Two rows, four columns. Or you can understand it like this. One, two, three, four. Two rows, four columns, two rows, four elements, whatever you have to understand. Okay, whatever suits you for easy one. Okay. Next. So for A2, if you look on, this is the A2. And what is, would be the shape of this? 1, 3, 2, right? One big row with the three rows and two columns. X, Y, Z. Z is 1. And then you get the whole things. Alright? What if you write an array without a shape? Uh, without any, uh, like with a single element or something like that? One D one dimension, let's say a one dot shape. What we get is four comma. That means only four of the columns or four of the elements. Okay. All right. I think that is clear. Next. 
So for any of the data type like A5, A6, what are we having? A dot data type is integer 64. Data type integer 64. Now if you want only the name, we can just write dot name. Integer 64. And you get with it. Okay. Clear? Dot data type dot name. That's okay. So for any arrays, you can even reshape that. Like if you are getting 2 by 4 for A3, then we can just write A3 dot reshape. And if uh, reshape would be done like in the different uh, or the just the opposite of the shape. Like if it is 2 by 4, that is 2 rows and 4 columns. You can make in 4 rows and 2 columns. So 4 by 2. Four rows and two columns. See, right? So reshape does it like that, right? But when you use a negative of a reshape, that bring it down to a linear or you can say one dimension. All right, for any number of dimensions it can have, right? Let three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, any number of dimensions. When it comes to minus one. I like negative of any of the number it brings down to a thing uh, like uh, we can say on one dimension array okay that is a use of reshape okay now the data types what we are dealing like uh, like if I write some complex ones complex of 128 bytes right so the data item size would be sixteen, right okay now, now if I want to change the complex to any other like if, if with a complex event I take this I take true and false Okay, that is boolean right now. Now, uh, if I want to convert this to any other data type, I have to use the function that is called as as type. Now, as type creates a copy of the array and changes accordingly to the data type you write. Okay, so let's remove like from here. Let's copy, paste. And I'm changing its as type to if if you want integer you can write int float and all so integer is i and you can get data type is integer of 32 bits 32 bits all right so for true it's one for false is zero obviously you'll be getting the things I think that's clear. And again, if you want to change it, for float, you can write float, a boolean, you can write bool, complex, you can write complex, it's cr, c would not work, it is c type, you will be getting up, the complex would be this, right, and like that. Unicodes and all, you can write it along with that. Okay. I think that is clear, right? In these ways, uh, we can write like write all these things as types and all. Okay. Now, if you have any of the array and you want to copy it, like as a list, you can just write array dot copy. Look on through the array. 
same as a5 see we can say a5 of 5 is 0 If I write like this, let's see. Array. Okay. What are the outcome you are getting? A list bracket. Right. So that is like if you have a habit of writing a list bracket, then it is a good way, right? Okay. So A5, what we are getting? Like we have replaced the thing and searching it again. 3, we are getting 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have 3. We look on the things. A copy is something like if you copy an array and if it make a change there, changes can be done, right? In a copy one. But the copy one will be having change, right? And the original one will not be affected. Like if I say a z, sorry, a seven of zero is equals to one two three four five. If I look onto the a seven. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But what about A5? It is 1, 0, 0, whatever it was, right? Now, have you noticed one thing like in the list? If I say print x, you get a list of numbers. So, is this list in a particular format, uh, like in a particular gap or formatting? Can you see a gaps? Is it the same number of elements? See? No. Right, because it's not in the pure form of like gaps and all, right? But what if we talk about an array? If it is an array, what if? You will see a uh, like a formatting of a number. See here itself. If I print only the first 500, see, you'll always find a linearity in them, like in the spacings and all, everything will be in very, very well formatted way. Alright, so things will be done there easily. Right? Alright, so copy will be like if you edit something in the copy, the original will not be changed. But what if I say something called as view function, right? That makes a another view for the new array basically comes as a new view of the original array right so whatever the changes you do in the new one the new view the original array also gets affected right let's say a6 a8 is equals to a5 dot view that is a new view of a5 a8 comes as that's right. A5 comes still as this. We say A8 equals A8 of 0 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Okay. Now look on to the A8. The first has, has been changed, right? Now why are these spaces coming? Because of the equal gaps what is being needed. See, the gaps are being maintained. Okay. All right. Now look on A5. You'll again see a same thing, right? That is being changed. So these are the things which has to be focused on when you uh, work on the numpy, right? Very small, small functions change the things. All right. Yeah, fine. Okay. So having doubts till now, we stop the recording.